This is one half of the Moonlander, the latest split ergonomic column layout mechanical keyboard by ZSA, the same people that brought us the Ergodox EZ. Now, unlike the Ergodox EZ, which is based on an open source design, the Moonlander is entirely proprietary. This review is going to look at the Moonlander on its own merits, but we're also going to look how it stacks up against the Ergodox EZ. And whilst they share a lot of similarities, we'll find out that in some respects the difference is actually black and white. That'd be much. I've been using an Ergodox EZ for about six months now as my daily driver, and two things that have really ruined normal staggered layout keyboards for me are the split halves and the column key layout. I've come to really appreciate the split design of the keyboard. Whilst it felt faintly ridiculous at first to stand there with two halves shoulder width apart like I was flying the USS Enterprise or something. Engage. I actually find it now a genuine delight to use. It really kind of opens your chest up as you work and going back to a normal keyboard now feels really uncomfortable. I've also come to appreciate this column design of the keys. It was a real benefit to me when I was trying to learn the Colmac layout, being able to mentally picture which keys were directly above or below the keys that your fingers were on. Having keys laid out in a grid just seems so obvious when you get used to it that you just can't seem to go back to a normal keyboard again. So I like the Ergodox EZ a lot. There's just a few things that didn't sit particularly well with me. I never really felt like I'd got the thumb clusters working as well as they might for me. I wasn't mad about the fact that not all of the keys had LEDs on them. And I also never really found a good use for the inner keys that are a slightly odd shape. Now, to be honest, when I first looked at the Moonlander, I wasn't sure that would be the keyboard for me either. I'm not mad about the very thin keyboards where you can see the, the switches, you know, they're not sunk in the, the, the low profile cases. And I wasn't sure about the wrist rests either, the fact that they were connected, although you can remove them. So the lack of the longer keys at the outside edges of the board was a worry for me because I'm used to staggered keyboards and in turn the, the Ergodox where you do have longer keys at the outside edges. And I was worried how I would get on with not having those longer keys for things like shift, return, backspace. And also the fact that when I looked at the thumb clusters, I wasn't sure there was enough buttons, even though I didn't like the Ergo Docs ones particularly. I was worried that there was less buttons and whether I'd have enough buttons to do everything that I needed to do because more's better, I think. Unlike the Ergo Docs EZ, when you order the Moonlander, you just choose the colour, the switches you want, and that's it. Everything else comes with it as standard. So the wrist rests, the, the carry slip, and the tenting legs for the inside of the board, everything comes with it. When you've got the board, obviously you can take off the inside legs if you want. You can take off the wrist rests. You can take off the thumb modules if you want to as well. In fact, you can even use just one half because the left-hand side of the board will work quite happily by itself. So if you're somebody that does a lot of first-person shooters, you might find that a real bonus because you can just use the left side of the keyboard and free up some space for your mouse. So the point is whether you use a little or a lot, you get it all. Three weeks after ordering the keyboard arrived, I've been using it for two or three weeks, and I can tell you with confidence that it's better than the Ergodox EZ in almost every regard, and a stonkingly good keyboard in its own right. Coming from using the Ergodox EZ, I immediately felt right at home with this keyboard, and those little keys on the outside edge that I thought were going to be a big deal for me, I didn't notice it after a couple of days. It just hasn't been a problem at all. And the fact that you get LEDs on every single key, including the thumb cluster, more than makes up for it. I would say the Moonlander probably sits about a keycaps height lower than the Ergodox EZ does. And I never found the Ergodox EZ an uncomfortable board. Although I'd got the um, the wing wrist rests with the Ergodox EZ. I never felt I needed to use them and it was always a bit annoying anyway when you're shifting the keyboard around to have to move the wrist rests as well. So I was always quite happy using the Ergodox EZ flat on the desk anyway, but I have to say with the Moonlander, with it being just that little bit lower, it is a little bit more comfortable. I ordered the Moonlander with kale black switches for no reason other than the fact that I'd already got MX Browns kale box browns, I'd got clicky blues, I've got speed silvers, a whole raft of different keys. I, I, I typically favour tactile switches 
and I only really got these curl blocks because I hadn't got any um, linear switches. But I have to say, I love these curl blacks. They feel really, really good. So if you're somebody that likes tactile switches, I would say give them a whirl. But you can be safe in the knowledge that the, one of the best things about these sorts of keyboards, the Moonlander, is it's hot swappable. So if you order it with a particular set of keys, uh, sorry, key switches, and you don't like them, it's an absolute cinch to pull them out and put some completely different key switches in until you do get a key switch that you really like. I also wasn't sure about the wrist supports on the Moonlander. They looked a bit kind of weird to me when I looked at them and all the, the videos and marketing material. But I have to say, they're actually fantastic and they just put your hands in just the right place to use the board. I can't really see, say enough good things about those wrist rests. As simple as they are, they just do exactly what you want them to do. You forget they're there and that's probably the best compliment that I can give them. And it's also lovely with them being attached that when you shift the board around, you haven't got to then move you know, your wrist rests as well. The USB lead on the Moonlander comes out of the left hand side of the board. If you're used to the Ergodox EZ, that comes out of the right side of the board. And I have to say, this is really messed with my desk, Feng Shui, because now I've got this big stonking cable running across my desk to the right hand side of my monitor where it plugs in. So that's something I'm just going to have to get used to. More annoying than the the USB lead being on the left hand side is the fact that sometimes, well most of the times, the Moonlander won't wake my Mac from sleep. Now it's important to point out here that my Moonlander is not going straight into my Mac Mini, it's going into a monitor. I've got the, the BenQ 3200U 32 inch monitor which has got a built in KVM switch which has been fantastic with the Ergodox and the Ergodox wakes up the, the computer's no problem at all but for some reason the Moonlander doesn't what I typically have to do is click my mouse to start the sort of wake up of the of the machine and then after sort of five or ten seconds it starts to register the key switches it's not the end of the world but it is pretty irritating and I've tried the different settings in the Oryx um, the firmware software there's a couple of different toggles there around USBs and KVMs but that makes no difference for me. I asked Sarah to say about this and whether it might get fixed in the future with the firmware update but they thought it was unlikely simply due to the the variety of different devices that you get. He said powered hubs would be absolutely fine um, but there's a possibility if you're running a KVM it might not always work for you. About the only other thing I wasn't happy with with the Moonlander out of the box was the stabilizer keys. Now I've done a, a different video on the stabilizer keys and how I remedied the rattle but out of the box they are quite rattly. Now since that video I think I've actually settled on what I believe is the gold standard modification for these keys and what that involves is I've actually got enough here for about 200 Moonlander boards but I've got a this is 1.2 mil heat shrink tubing which you can get from electrical stores. We get it from RS components here in the UK. I've cut six mil, four six mil pieces of the heat shrink, line them up over the stabilizers, and then use a soldering iron to shrink those onto the, the stabilizer bar on those two big stable, uh, the two big triangle keys. And you can hear now with that in place. If you've got a Moonlander, you'll know what that sounds like. And if you're not sure, go and have a listen to the other video. But you can hear the difference now. Rattle is gone. So although that's slightly more involved than, than wrapping plumbing tape around the stabilizer bars, I think that's well worth it if you want a solution that's just going to make the problem go away. You do need the 1.2 mil. Don't get the 1.6 or the 1.5, that'll be too big um, and the keys struggle to move a little bit. One other little curiosity that's worth noting is you can actually use a standard 2U key keycap on the thumb modules if you want, but obviously triangles are cooler. On the subject of keycaps, I really wish somebody like Signature Plastics would make a, an aftermarket set of keycaps for the, the Moonlander. 
because obviously you've got these thumb clusters which use slightly different keycaps. And I also am quite aggrieved that you can't get different homing keys for the Moon Lander. Signature Plastics always do with, with their sets. If you buy a DSA set from Signature Plastics, you can nearly always get um, a homing key set, which is like $8 or something like that. And it gives you the homing keys if you're using Colmac and Dvorak. Um, I'd really wish that ZSA would make that as a an optional extra as well. If you've never used a split column layout keyboard like the Ergodox or the Moonlander before, I think you need to mentally prepare yourself for a couple of months at least to get used to it. Thankfully, one of the best things about the Moonlander is that ZSA have anticipated that and give you a whole suite of online software to help you make that transition from a normal staggered keyboard to one of these split column layout ones. Oryx is ZSA's online configuration tool. And with that, you can map the keyboard to whatever layout that you like. So you could have QWERTY, Dvorak, Colmac, Workman, Benman, Halmac, and only one of those was made up. But the real beauty of Oryx is the fact that you can do whatever you want. You open the tool, you see a layout of the physical keys of your board, you save the layout, you download it, and then use another ZSA tool, which is called Wally, to flash that file onto your keyboard. And as all your layouts are version controlled, you can fork your layout at any time. So you can try some different stuff, you can refine it. It just really lets you hone the board to do exactly what you want to do. So look, here's my current layout, and this is what the list of revisions look like. And I can easily fork any one of those and create a new layout based on any of them. And you, you can also search through the layouts of other users for ideas too. Like most highly programmable keyboards, you can use layers to map different sets of keys to the, the key switch positions based on pressing a certain key on the keyboard. So you press the magic key and that will take you from your normal layer to layer one and layer one might have a number pad on it or arrow keys on the homing keys or a, a, a mouse over on the left because this will even do mouse movements for you as well. The point is you can have like a 10 probably more layers to facilitate whatever you want. And incidentally, if you've got a Moonlander and an Ergo Docs, thankfully, Wally is smart enough to know that you've got both boards connected and will make you choose one before you try and flash a file to it. Really, the only way that would make this any better is if there was some sort of program where your board was connected and you could make the, the changes on the fly without having to download and flash firmware. And maybe that will come in the future, I don't know, but it really, it's pretty low friction as it is. Now it's not just moving normal keys into different positions that you can do with Oryx. It's also got some really cool features that let you do stuff you just can't do with other sorts of keyboards. Now I'm not going to show you all of them but I do want to show you just a couple to give you an idea of the kind of things that you can do and the two things that I've found genuinely useful. Auto shift is a feature that lets you hold each key for just a fraction longer than you would normally and it will give you the, the shifted version of that key. So you can have it on just the alpha keys, just the numeral keys, or, or both. I've had it set to both, and after a little bit of tweaking with the delay, which again is something else that you can do, I just love it. Um, I just hardly ever need to touch my shift key anymore. The second one that I'd like to tell you about is called Tap Dance. And I really thought this was gonna be a bit of a gimmick, but to give you an illustration, I've got, I've got two keys set with tap dances. The first one is the minus key, which I've got on this inside edge of the, the left hand side here. If I tap it, I get a normal dash. If I double tap it, tap it in quick succession, I get an M dash. And then if I press and hold, it will actually zoom me out of a program. So it's the equivalent of like command and minus. So I use that in things like Sketcher from Dean Designs or Final Cut Pro to go in and out of the timeline. And the other one is, is the flip side of that, which is the plus key. Um, and I just have two there, have it acting like a normal plus key ordinarily. And then if I press and hold it, it will zoom in like a command and plus key. So again, tiny little things, but you just find that they, they save you a lot of time and it just make normal day-to-day -day operations that bit more comfortable. Now, you, you don't have to have something as involved as a tap dance. There's still plenty of other things that you find that you do that you can make use and assign to a particular key. 
So for me, I use Sublime Text. And one of the things I love about Sublime Text is the go to anything feature. So I've got that mapped to a key. So I'm able to just press that, paste in a class name, and press enter, and it's going to take me straight to it. That used to be a bit of a three finger dance for me because it would be shift, command, and R to bring up the code to anywhere panel. Incidentally, on the subject of Sublime Text, I've got a course coming out very soon, Ultimate Productivity with Sublime Text. Please subscribe, follow, ask your auntie, whatever. Follow me for updates. That's going to be coming out soon. If that's the sort of thing you might be interested in, I'll let you know. Now, as I've mentioned, if this is the first time you've used a keyboard like this, it's likely to be pretty overwhelming at first. But the other side of the software that ZSA have for you is training software. And what the, the ZSA software will let you do is connect to the keyboard, and you've got to use a, a Chromium browser because you need Web USB, which isn't in other browsers yet. You connect your keyboard, it knows your keyboard's there, and gives you a live view of the keys that you're pressing, and then you can practice prose, you can practice different um, languages, JavaScript, um, Python, there's, there's quite a few C-based languages. You can even set it to record a heat map as you go about your day-to-day -day business, leave it running for sort of half an hour, an hour or whatever as you're working, and go back to it, and it can show you a heat map of the keys that you've pressed. So this is good for when you're trying to hone in on which keys you're actually pressing and where you could move keys that you use a lot to make them closer to the home row, something like that. Just another amazing little tool that you get for free. The point I'd like to emphasize is that although these are expensive keyboards, you're getting a lot of support for the money as well, besides just the physical hardware. Now, ZSA are calling this the Moonlander Mark One, and I don't think that's just a marketing gimmick. I actually think that's quite a specifically chosen name. If you look at the underside of the board, you'll see things like the, the thumb modules, say original thumb module, which I take to mean that there's different th thumb modules coming down the line. So you're potentially buying into a whole ecosystem of other stuff as well. There's also what look like mounting points on the underside as well. So I don't know whether we're gonna get some sort of extreme tilting kit for the people that need it as well. Okay, this review is already far longer than I ever anticipated, so let me try and summarise this. I've called out a few negatives in this review, but those things are absolutely dwarfed by all the stuff that's positive about this keyboard. The support that you get with the Oryx software and training is absolutely second to none. It's comfortable, it's well built, it packs up small if you need to travel. The wrist rests are actually great. Even the backlighting, with it now being on every single key, is genuinely useful. It was a real bugbear of mine on the Ergodox, so I'm really glad that that's sorted in the Moonlander. Now for sure, I'd really love the chance to get some proper homing keys. And I wish I didn't have to mod the stabilizers out the box as well. And it would be great if it woke up my Mac Mini through the KVM I've got in my monitor every time as well. But despite all that, and despite the, the steep asking price, Given the fact that we're talking about a hot swap, split, modular, entirely programmable, it's comfortable, tiltable, modular thumbs, built-in wrist rests, it folds up nice and small if you want to travel, it even comes with a, a carry case. Considering all that, I think this is probably the best value keyboard I've ever bought. If this review was useful, please subscribe, like, tell your family, Get a tattoo, and I'll see you in the next one.